to see so many of you. I don't know about you, but I am sick to the hind teeth of Westminster at the moment. Sick of it. Sick of this pony show. Because as the internal wranglings in Parliament rage on, one of the things that we often forget is that constituencies in this country are suffering because of the effects of climate change right now. They're not just being felt in far-flung corners of the world, it's within our own borders, in our neighbourhoods. Representing one such constituency and telling that story with passion and ferocity, please put your hands together for Liz Savile Roberts representing Clyde Cymru! And I was one of the parliamentary leaders who was honoured to meet Greta Thunberg last week. And her message, of course, was simple. It was a simple, 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 difficult, difficult message of listening to the scientists and listening to the facts. And that comes difficult to some politicians now. But what I'd like to tell you is the story of a little community in my constituency. And there's a risk of you just sort of switching off when you hear an MP saying that, because it's about a community called Fairbourne. It's not very old. It was set up about a hundred years ago because it's in a lovely place right by the coast between the Cardigan Bay and the estuary of the River Malvach. And it was there because it's a nice place to be. But the sea is rising by 4.7 millimetres a year at least. Fairbourne stands on land that its highest is 2 metres, 2.5 metres above sea level. The spring tide and there are 25 of those a year, sorry, 24 of those a year, is higher now than the land in Fairbourne. Now, the local authority and the local environment agency are doing their best. They've got a plan, they've got a master plan, but they've got almost no money and they have no statutory powers. And 40 years from now, what they're telling the community is, we'll no longer be looking after the sea defences. Where those people will go when they ask the question, they've got no answers. Where their houses will be, they've got no answers. Now, believe me, poor Fairbourne is in this position because of its exact location. But Fairbourne is not unique. This is happening around the coast. Now, I've had somebody when I raised this last week here in Westminster who wrote to me and said you shouldn't talk about this. We were talking about this four years ago and it's made it difficult for us to buy our houses. We can't get mortgages anymore. I actually know of somebody and this, this does distress me somebody who faces being made homeless now because we can't deal with this problem. She said keep quiet it's old history. Now, as a politician, my best interest probably will be served by the fact, what am I, mid-50s, I'm going to contest a couple more general elections. I could keep my head down. I could keep quiet. But that isn't our duty, is it? And that's not why you're here either. The uncomfortable news doesn't go away because we don't talk about it. Are you going to steer clear? Are you going to avoid the uncomfortable news? Or are you going to face the next generation and say, I did something? What are you going to do? Come on, you are going to do something, aren't you? So you tell those politicians in there, yeah, short-termism. Our democracy, it works very well in five years. It works on five-year spans. But our democracy does not work well in this sort of challenge. We have a slow-moving emergency in Fairbourne. We have a slow-moving emergency around every coastal community. I bring to you the challenge, and I credit you, because you can do more than all those lobbying groups in there who have a fast track into the government. You now, with your civil disobedience and your determination and your presence here, you now will be held in the greatest respect by generations of the future. And I tip my hat to you. Thank you.